I'm Bill Shapiro. I am the supervising audiologist at the Cochlear Implant Center at NYU Medical Center. You know, for a very, very long time, we talked about implanting an ear, and we forget that a patient has two ears, and we need to look at each ear individually when we're figuring out a treatment option. So a patient may have an implant in one ear and a hearing aid in the other, or an implant in both ears. It's very important that both ears be looked at when we're talking about cochlear implants and or hearing aid. So a patient may end up being a bilateral patient. They end up, may end up being a binaural patient. In other words, hearing aid on one side and cochlear implant on the other. And part of my counseling when I talk to parents of kids or adults who may be um, considering an implant is you need two ears to be able to function. You know, in a mainstream environment, when a child's in school, the kid next to them has two ears functioning. So when I say to a parent that your child needs to have the same two ears functioning as the kid next to them, they get it. And so that's how we look at, um, at, at uh, patients. They need to have um, both ears working. We know that two ears gives you the ability to localize where sound is in space. We know that two ears helps you to hear better in noisy environments, and a classroom can be a noisy environment. Um, so a cochlear implant and a hearing aid or two cochlear implants with the use of an FM system can really be a very important um, adjunct to these kids when they're in, in a, uh, an educational environment. I think that it's actually very important when you're testing someone's hearing to test them under three conditions, right? We need to test the right ear, we need to test the left ear, we need to test both ears together to give us an idea of what the best treatment option is. In the counseling process, we kind of divide this up into children and adults. When we talk about counseling, there are a lot of areas of discussion. We talk about device reliability, we talk about rehab, we talk about devices themselves. The most important part about counseling is expectations. We need to have my expectations of how well a patient will do align with the patient's expectations. What's appropriate for each year? Should it be a bilateral implant? Should they be bimodal? If they're gonna be um, 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 bilateral, are they gonna be simultaneous? Are they gonna be sequential? We have more um, simultaneous um, bilateral kids than we do adults, but if someone's gonna be sequential, why are they gonna be sequential? Maybe they're not appropriate for an implant in their contralateral ear. Maybe insurance won't pay um, for um, a, 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 another implant. Maybe they wanna wait. What about bimodal benefit? We know there are a lot of reasons for bimodal benefit. Better speech understanding, improved um, sound, feel, sound and music quality, enhanced localization abilities, but also someone should be bimodal because we can stimulate their non-implant ear, and if they do decide to get an implant, that will be quite important. When a patient comes in, um, an adult or a child who's already wearing a well-fit hearing aid, that sets up another scenario. That means they've seen their primary audiologist, they may be happy with their primary audiologist, so what we need to do is to be able to form an alliance with that um, other audiologist. We do a lot of um, uh, uh, presentations. Uh, the otologist and I travel a lot around the tri-state area doing presentations to very um, well-informed private practitioners to tell them about the benefit of cochlear implants. And we've been getting referrals from those audiologists. So those are the audiologists who have been dispensing the um, one side, the hearing aid to one side, and we've been working on the cochlear implant side um, together. So you need to be able to establish a good relationship with um, the referring audiologist because that's where you're getting many of your referrals. I think in terms of, if I had to summarize this, I would say that effective counseling and effective counseling could lead to a, leads to appropriate expectations and leads to higher patient satisfaction. We have two ears. You just can't implant one ear and leave the other alone. We need to look at each ear. Patient gets an implant in one ear. They need an implant in the other side. They need a hearing aid on the other side. We need to look at both ears independently. That's critical. Patients deserve to hear in both ears. I hear in both ears. They should hear in both ears. That's how I feel.